This is Malaysia's GGK Commando Training Course. Designed to separate the boys from the men. And turn what's left into elite soldiers. But to earn the Green Beret, they must first survive 13 weeks of hell. A brutal selection course that almost half will fail. And only the best will survive. Before large forces hit the combat zone, Malaysia's group Garakas Commandos are the first men on the ground. Sneaking in deep behind enemy lines by air, sea, or land. Ni pecahkan kepada kumpulan-kumpulan kecil. Yang mana kumpulan-kumpulan kecil ni kalau kita tengok zaman sekarang ni lebih kepada operasi gerila. To gather intelligence. Maksud dia kita hanya memerlukan lima orang anggota kita yang pakar dalam latihan-latihan ni dan kita akan cari dah local resources daripada mana pun. Rescue hostages or make the kill. They get in, and they get out undetected. But what makes them a cut above the rest is their ability to fight and survive in some of the world's most extreme jungles. Malaysia borders six countries in a region plagued by past conflicts, one of which gave birth to this elite unit. 1963. Neighboring country Indonesia launches the Crush Malaysia campaign, sending troops to attack the newly independent nation. A difficult border war was fought deep in the rainforests of Borneo, and a new elite force was needed, skilled in unconventional jungle warfare. Britain's Green Berets, the Royal Marine Commandos, were sent to help train a new group of fighters. 1,600 soldiers volunteered for training. 300 were selected. Of the 50 that went through the first course, only 12 passed. Today, there are fewer than 3,500 GGK commandos, a small elite club. To join it, these men will have to go through three months of relentless physical and psychological torture that will break all but the best. And the pain starts here. The Special Warfare Training Center in Malacca, Southwest Malaysia. <laughs> 5 a.m. 180 new recruits are in week one of their course. Just to get here, they have already passed a six-week selection process. Now, these survivors are about to start the real thing. If they thought they knew what was ahead, they were wrong. In phase one of this course, instructors are looking to lose the weakest recruits as quickly as possible. They've just begun 36 hours of continuous hell that will push everyone to the edge. It seems like torture, but it's designed to find out who really wants to be here. I want to show myself how far I can go. It's called adrenaline rush. To join the commando, you must be volunteer. So if you enter the main gate, there is a word say, if you are not sure, please go back. The tiger is the commando's regimental crest, signifying bravery, ferocity, and strength. Qualities they expect those that pass to possess. They've done five hours of endless, brutal exercises. The recruits are exhausted. But weakness is not accepted. Recruit 12 isn't keeping up. 
Banyakkan yang susah kita ada macam didikan ketabahan. Bagi saya setakat ni saya boleh ikut lagi lah. Go! This is what they are fighting for, the coveted Green Beret. Inherited from the Royal Marine Commandos, it's an iconic symbol of an elite group. Jadi Green Beret ini, sesiapa yang memiliki Green Beret diumpamakan adalah askar yang terbaik di dalam Malaysia. But only a select few of these recruits will ever get to wear it. The men are trained, but there will be no rest. They've only completed seven hours. They've got 29 more to go. Next is an 11-kilometer run with a 17-kilogram combat load and 87 minutes to finish it. To make it harder, it's midday and the temperature is above 30 degrees Celsius. This giant spotlight melting me down. <laughs> it's a real tough. <laughs> In this heat, losing fluids is a real problem. Muscles start to cramp and the body starts to overheat. Dehydration means failure. 40 minutes into the run and the sun has claimed its first victim. Dalam keadaan macam ni dia dah kita dah banyak running basic commando jadi dah bagi saya dah biasa. If recruits are sent to the hospital, they automatically fail the course. With little time left, they can't afford to slow down for a minute. is up. 77 have failed the run. And the 30 degree heat has taken its toll on everyone. Uh, my knee was injured. Uh, I feel OK. I can breathe in uh, normally, but I'm totally sad. <laughs> 24 hours in, and overnight, another seven recruits have dropped out due to injuries from yesterday's run. 173 survivors are already on their next challenge. It's the 300-meter obstacle course, designed to test balance, confidence, and above all, teamwork. The last hurdle will be the toughest, a 3.5-meter vertical wall. They have to work in team. They cannot work solo. If they make it solo, they just cannot make it. Teamwork is essential to be a GGK commando. In real operations, teamwork will keep them alive. Recruit 12 is once again struggling, holding up the rest of his team. Saya dah 31 yang gegen ni baru ada yang 21, 20. So, saya terpaksa bersaing dengan umur yang 10 tahun lebih ke bawah dengan saya. Some teams have already reached the final hurdle, the 3.5 meter wall. Now, it's time for teamwork. To clear this obstacle, they need to form a pyramid. Short guys on the bottom, tallest and lightest aiming for the top. A falling recruit becomes the first casualty. His M16 rifle muzzle puncturing his neck. In battle, failure to work together could mean more than a flesh wound. They reorganize and clear the wall. It's 30 hours in, but not over yet. This obstacle course is just preparing them for an even tougher challenge. Tonight, they will do it in the dark, 10 meters above the ground. Making a small mistake up here could be their biggest.
Recruits fighting to become a part of Malaysia's elite commando unit are in phase one of one of the toughest selection courses in the world. Seven of 180 have already failed, and those who have made it this far are totally exhausted. Their next challenge will be the toughest yet, the dreaded Tarzan course. It starts with a 10-meter rope climb, eight obstacles designed to test their nerve, coordination, and teamwork. Recruits have to navigate from one end to the other using ropes and beams without falling, all at night. It's a confident building exercise, because that's why you can see this height and see only a small cable to cross, the log, and also they have to crawl in the rope. Yang mencabar sekali, masa last sekali untuk didikan ketabahan tu dia ada macam tazan swing tu. Ada setengah yang tak dapat ke jaring tu terus jatuh ke bawah. for seasoned soldiers under normal circumstances is now compounded by fatigue and stress. One recruit has paused at the top, but there is no way down. No! 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 Recruit 12 is doing better than expected. But he's got one final hurdle, the Tarzan swing. Saya rasa benda itu gembira sebab saya boleh lakukan. Sebab lagi cepat kita buat lagi cepat kita punya benda itu selesai. 36 of the longest hours of their lives have ended. But despite tonight's success, Recruit 12 has failed week one of the course. Uh, untuk kenangan itu, saya rindu bersama dengan saya punya intik saya ini. Sebab kita orang makan bersama, tidur pun kita... Sama -sama bangun, makan pun sama -sama yang ada. 144 recruits remain, and they have 56 more days of the selection course to go. Phase two, the training from here moves into a more tactical phase. It's going to get tougher and tougher. Next up, they face a 160 kilometer non-stop forced march that will take them three days. It's the equivalent of doing almost four marathons back to back, with little food and even less rest. Normally, one in four don't reach the finish line. Untuk men menguji ketahanan mental dan fizikal, sekiranya berlaku yang sebenar kita akan lari lebih daripada ini lagi. Jarak dia lebih jauh lagi pada 160 km. Maybe 200 km atau lebih lagi lah. The GGK normally operate on foot, covering huge distances. But getting behind the enemy lines sometimes requires another skill. Kalau kita boleh jalan darat, mungkin banyak risiko yang kita mungkin dengan bobby trap, dengan jerangkat sama, dengan dengan berbagai halangan dan masa yang diambil adalah lambat, mungkin dua tiga jam kita nak tujuan dan kita akan digugurkan kalau melalui static jump. Mungkin dalam uh, 55 saat ke 1 minit, kita dah sampai ke sasaran daripada buka payung. So, uh, tujuan kita menggunakan uh, parachute ini adalah untuk menyusup ke negara atau ke tempat musuh itu dengan lebih cepat dan selamat. But these recruits have to learn to walk before they can fly. It's day one of the longest march of their lives. The terrain is uneven and the weather extremely hot. 50 kilometers on day one, and nine recruits have already dropped out. Sebab dia melampaui akal manusia biasa. 
Saya daripada Kuala Lumpur, KL KL lah, lahir KL Besar KL Sebab semua orang pandang orang KL ni lemah Leput Sangat lemah Tapi saya rasa orang KL boleh Orang KL boleh berjaya sebagai seorang pemandu They are losing more fluids than they can possibly replace. Dehydration is a real threat. Instructors keep a close eye out for telling signs. Its first symptoms are muscle cramps and dizziness, which can rapidly lead to a full body shutdown. Dia gigit kayu tu supaya dia tak boleh menggigit dia punya lidah sebab dia sekarang ni keadaan panas, panas tinggi. Dia hilang dia punya kawalan otak dia dah hilang Jadi dia akan gigit lidah The recruits are carrying 17 kilogram packs It's up to them to decide when to snack And replace vital fluids Go, go! Lojok, lojok! Lapa kira! But the instructors set the pace. Go, go! Wah, gan mana ro? Cepat! Go, go! Hey, teruskan! Dah sampai dah, dekat lah! They are trying to keep the pack together to avoid any stragglers who may be tempted to hitch a ride. It's 15 hours in, and for some, the end of the road. Go! Not everyone is struggling. Saya suka kalau jalan laju saya suka sangat. Mula-mula saya jalan pun saya terpeleh. Tapi kaki saya sakit ah. Tapi saya post saya punya badan saya lepas tu panas semua. Lepas tu okey ah. Tinggal paham pun sempat. My body is okay. Uh, there's no much pain. Uh, here and there so my leg is still okay. So far it's so good. I can still okay. Can see smiling. At this stage, teamwork and leadership will be judged. Recruit two needs his section to keep up. I need them to be motivated in everything they do. They just need to run for five seconds. So dash for five seconds, and then we we'll take rest. Soldier is about teamwork. So, how big or small we are, we need to be together. GGK commandos need to push themselves beyond the normal physical pain barrier. It takes extreme mental strength to keep the body moving. But in combat, that could save lives. 90 kilometers in. As high noon hits, some can't take the pain anymore. Despite Recruit 2's best efforts, one of his buddies is in serious trouble. Disorientation and confusion are signs of advanced dehydration. His friends want him to finish, but his condition is getting worse. Kita tunggu ada sebab dia ada doktor. Doktor akan beri keputusan lah sama ada dia boleh teruskan lagi ataupun tak boleh teruskan lagi. They urgently need to rehydrate him. If he doesn't get saline solution in the next few minutes, he could go into shock and die. 135 of Malaysia's toughest men are in the middle of a three-month selection course to become part of Malaysia's elite special forces unit the GGK Commandos. They are in phase two, a 160 kilometer forced march lasting three days. A recruit has become severely dehydrated. If he doesn't get saline solution fast, his body could shut down. Hey. He wakes, but needs urgent medical attention. He'll survive, but for him and 14 others hospitalized today, it's the end of the line.
dia tenaga kadang-kadang tak sama kan sebab saya minat je ni dia bila kita dah dulu satu peringkat satu peringkat kita jadi ada satu kenangan bagi kita macam peringkat ni macam saya yang gagal saya tengok member-member yang apa ya lulus kan saya jadi macam sedih lah ya. sebab tak boleh ikut saya Hundred twenty kilometers into the march, and the survivors finally reach a rest stop. No one has voluntarily quit yet, but with sixty kilometers left to go, it's early days. Well, tomorrow will be much harder. It's my last start to say that for the first thirty or forty kilo, uh, you will use your strength, okay, your feet, your physical, and the rest you just use your mental uh, to keep going. Yang dia orang fikir sekarang ni dia mau nak pakai greenberry. Itu saja dia patut fikir. Sebab itu dia punya matlamat dia datang untuk mengadiri khusus ni. Kalau dia nak fikir dia penat, dia akan gagal. Tomorrow they are going to have to do it all over again. Face dehydration, hunger, pain and the worst enemy of all, self-doubt. GGK commandos are sent to places where self-doubt isn't something they can afford. 1993, Somalia's capital Mogadishu is plagued by poverty and civil war. Two U.S. Black Hawk helicopters were shot down, and Malaysian special forces were called in to help with the rescue operation. Under constant attack from rebels, it took two full days to get the trapped soldiers out. One GGK commander was killed and several wounded. Real missions can rage for days on end without clear outcomes. But commandos must have complete confidence in their abilities to grapple with the unknown. 5 a.m., day three, and the recruits have begun the final day of their 160-kilometer forced march. It will take all their willpower to push to the end. Kemampuan fizikal tu tak penting kan, yang penting kemampuan mental. Halangan pada diri sendiri tu merupakan musuh-musuh kita tu, diri sendiri. With 10 kilometers to go, some have dug deep inside to find the energy to make a run to the finish line. Dulu saya nak nombor satu lah. Itu yang saya sebab saya seorang saya, budak India. Saya buat latihan lah. Bukan untuk latihan saja. Bukan untuk training saja. One hundred sixty kilometers in three days. Recruit one forty-three has completed his personal mission. He is the first to cross the green clearing that marks the end of the forced march. The second group, hot on his heels. Sangat teruja kan, sebab macam luar jangkaan, macam tak percaya pada kemampuan kita kan. Bila kita melaluinya, kita akan dapat bayangkan. Macam mana yang orang kata kanan sangat dahsyat komando ni kan amat digurni kita kutian <laughs> 118 have made it to stage 3 and it's about to get tougher <coughs> Their next mission get dropped deep into the harshest place imaginable and survive for 2 weeks without food or water When commandos need to hide, they go where their enemies will not follow them. The GGK have mastered the art of jungle warfare after successfully beating a communist insurgency in the 1960s. Rebel strongholds were deep inside Malaysia's jungles. The GGK not only had to find and fight them, but learn to survive in this most hostile of environments. Commandos would often be sent into the jungle with one month's supply of food for operations that could last three months. Exhaustion, tropical disease, and wild animals claimed the lives of some men, but the experience gained made them ultimate jungle fighters. The GGK chose the most extreme environment to train their commandos in survival. 
Malaysia's remote swamplands are as uninhabitable as it gets. They have nothing but a machete and three simple tasks. To find food and water and to build a shelter. But in this environment, nothing is easy. They face extreme heat, heavy rainfall, mud, snakes, and crocodiles. And just to make things worse, mosquitoes and sand flies are everywhere. An early survival tip from the instructors makes the start slightly more bearable. Ini kadang macam kita ada ni orang cakap agas, nyamuk je kita kalau berlumpur, kita tak boleh nak tua. This exercise simulates escaping from capture and surviving a period of evading enemy patrols. Cepat, 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 cepat. Kita pilih tempat yang begini, tempat payah begini sebab tujuan pertama dia musuh susah nak kesan, dia susah nak bergerak masuk. Ini kita kawasan payah ni kita buat untuk dia nak menyesuaikan diri dengan keadaan tempat ni lah. The mud sucks away whatever energy these recruits have left. I've never been in this state before. <laughs> uh, I miss my sister's cooking. Yeah, we still got much to go. Recruits are allowed to eat anything they can catch, but they must share it. Kami kejar dengan kawan-kawan. Rasa seronok sangat dapat biawak ni. Mesti tak makan. Binatang ini, walaupun saya keadaan darurat, saya mesti dapat boleh makan lah. Untuk menambahkan tenaga. You cannot choose favorites here. <laughs> you just eat things. Yeah. Sebab. Okay, dia pakai tungkorak tu menandakan dia telah berjaya menangkap. Jadi dia akan jadi bangga. Jadi benda ni dia akan menjadi menarik minat kumpulan-kumpulan yang lain akan berusaha lebih lagi untuk nak survivalkan diri dia untuk nak hidup. The water in the swamp is brackish and unbearable to drink. So Malaysia's torrential rainstorms are both a source of suffering and salvation. Dengan keadaan yang sejuk, bila menjelang malam dia akan bertambah lagi sejuk. Jadi ini pertama kali masak kera, jadi kera punya kepala disambungkan. Jadi apa yang boleh buat sini, kera ni dibelah, dibersihkan perut, lepas tu disalai. Itu je yang boleh buat. Rendam air masin, salai. Kita ada rasa masin-masin sikit, salai sampai kering. Saya kerja awam dulu, berat saya sebanyak 79. Dan sekarang ni saya rasa mungkin berat saya menjadi 69. In their weak states, it's hard for the recruits to catch enough food. So as a backup, they are given survival tip number two. Siput belitung ni dia boleh mendatangkan tenaga segera. Kalau dia makan dalam seko, dua seko, dia boleh pulihkan balik tenaga dia. Tapi dalam jangka masa pendek, dia boleh bertahan hanya untuk sekerak hari lah. Dalam lima, enam jam, macam tu. But they are only allowed to eat three snails a day, forcing them into the worst possible state. Those who break this rule will face the consequences. Candidates are in the last month of a 13-week selection course to join Malaysia's elite GGK commandos. They are in their third phase of training and have been dropped deep into swampland to learn how to survive. Snails are the easiest food to catch here, giving them the energy boost they desperately need. Learning to cope with situations this bad will help save their lives in real conflict. Jadi ini adalah siput yang dia orang cari untuk makanan dia orang dalam keadaan lapar. Dia ketuk menggunakan parang bagi pecah dengan cengkerang dia ni. Lepas tu dia akan koyak, dia akan tarik dia punya ni. Sebab kita mesti kena potongkan bagian ekor dia ni. Sebab baru dia boleh, sebab dia ada musi ni, isi dia. Dia melengkar-lengkar dalam ni, dia ikut ni. The isolation is a good time for thought. 
sebab dalam latihan komando ni tu keluarga memang tak bagi eh takut risiko tapi saya, saya datang sini secara sembunyi lah tak bagi tahu dia bahawa saya nak masuk komando setelah saya sampai kat Melaka selama 2 minggu baru saya kontak bagi tahu dia yang saya dah ada kat Melaka so dia tak boleh buat apa sebab saya duduk kat Melaka lah dia tak dapat nak halang lah tak dapat nak suruh saya balik sebab Utama saya masuk komando memang saya minat minat komando. At 2 a.m., a group has been caught eating extra snails. Not sharing this bounty is against the rules. Jadi tak ada makna lah kita buat latihan sebab bul untuk diri dia. Recruit 2 was the leader of the pack. His whole team will be punished. Baik tak baik aku suka komando. They will wash the mud from their bodies and be tied to a wooden platform exposed to the elements. Dia akan merasa kesusahan dia puasa perit, digigit oleh nyamuk, agas, dia tak boleh, tak boleh nak bergerak, dia tak boleh nak, nak tampak-tampak tak boleh, jadi dia akan, mungkin dia akan insaf lah. It looks sadistic, but the message will stick with them forever. Sebab komando ni dia akan bekerja dalam kumpulan yang kecil. Mungkin lima orang, mungkin sepuluh orang. Jadi dia tak ramai macam ni. Jadi bila dia tak boleh nak bekerjasama dengan kumpulan dia, jadi gagal lah. Dia seorang boleh bekerja, bagaimana dia tak boleh juga nak melaksanakan tugas tanpa kawan-kawan dia. This swamp will claim the weak and it will take everything they have to continue. The chances of making the grade have just taken a very bad turn. The group was tied up the entire night. They've survived it, but the next day brings new challenges. Normally, these men need 2,500 calories a day. Here, many are living on less than three. Some have lost up to 9% of their body weight. They are weak and tired, but the elements show no mercy. The threat of flooding has forced them to move their shelters to higher ground. Recruit 2 needs to push his team into building a treehouse that can withstand the harshest conditions. But his own energy levels are at their lowest point in the selection course. So it's going to be up, up to here. So we need to build above the water level. So at the center of the, we put Y. So support at the center. After we finish this base, it will be starting to break the roof. As camouflage. In a real situation, it's not just about survival. These men need to be alert and avoid capture. Discipline needs to continue even here. Those who don't keep to these rules are punished. Kesalahan mereka kerana tidak menjalankan tugas dengan betul. Kita mahu satu kilo. Dia punya makanan tapi dia buat balik dalam lima ekor ataupun enam ekor. Ha, mana kesalahan dia itu besar. Masalah dia dimasukkan ke dalam penjara. The recruits have no idea how long this torture will continue. Komando aja ya dapat tak macam ni. Kalau kau kaya lain tak dapat aku dapat macam ni. Kira lain dari lain lah. Komando ini kira untuk dia merasa macam mana Sekiranya berlaku perkara macam ni, inilah dia akan rasa. Sekiranya dalam peperangan sebenar, dia orang mungkin bukan makan macam ni lah. Mungkin dia orang akan lebih kena lebih teruk lagi lah. The recruits are released just before the high tide reaches its peak. The swamp phase is finally over. Recruits are headed back to base camp in Malacca, where they will face the moment of truth. Who made it to the final stage of the course, and who didn't? Jadi, kepada anggota yang telah di 
manggil nanti keluar ke bahagian hadapan di hadapan ni termasuk 02 Tun Untuk 05 Tun After a month of pushing their minds and bodies to the limit it's game over for 15 recruits Recruit 2 was caught disobeying orders and cheating Instructors were forced to throw him out of the course. We commando says, "So what? Kalau tak tertangkap tak salah. Kalau tangkap pun salah. This mean you're not guilty if you not get caught. <laughs> so I've been caught. That's mean I'm guilty. I'll be back. I'll be back. For the 103 men that remain." The course now becomes more tactical. Real soldiering skills that will turn them into commandos ready for the real world. GGK soldiers are world renowned for their jungle warfare skills, a legacy from their beginnings in the 1960s. But modern warfare has changed. Today's GGK commandos have to respond to new global threats that bring them into an urban environment. Before that, more toward the counterinsurgency. Now it's more toward the urban operation, or you can call it conventional warfare. The rise of terrorism post 9/11 has required a change in tactics. Secara tidak sedarnya, seorang anggota gerahas ni kita hantar khusus itu, dia sudah ada gerila warfare itu punya konsep tu ada pada diri dia. Cuma dia perlu sudkan tamatan keadaan keadaan dia. Kalau kita cakap tentang guerrilla warfare, guerrilla warfare ni dia mana-mana dia boleh pergi. The recruits that make it through the selection course will go on to specialize in airborne, land or amphibious operations. They'll train in the new facilities built to equip Malaysia's commandos for the 21st century, including the Killing House. Killing House ni lebih kepada uh, menyelamat tebusan. Uh, mencolek, uh, membebaskan tawanan ataupun membebaskan orang kenamaan. Macam mana dia nak masuk bilik, macam mana apabila dia jumpa seleko, dia nak mengambil seleko, macam mana dia tidak mau bertembak dengan kawan dia, macam mana kita ada kontrol, kita ada kontrol center, komunikasi punya kontrol. Hostage rescue requires another specialization. Sniper stationed in the outside perimeter. So, dikawal. Sniper dikawal dan diambil untuk maklumat-maklumat terbaru dan terkini di dalam kawasan dia punya aktiviti-aktiviti musuh. So, semasa tim pengempur masuk di kawasan Stronghold, sniper untuk memberi perlindungan kepada tim pengempur dan membunuh dia punya teroris yang berada di kawasan uh, koridor ataupun di kawasan sentri musuh. team is made up of four commandos. One to guide the hostage, and the others to cover them as they make their escape. At the selection course, the number of recruits vying for a spot on Malaysia's elite commando force has dropped from 180 to 103. Those who remain have reached the final test, known by the commandos as escape and evasion. It's a culmination of everything they have learned in the course. Their mission, to destroy a heavily guarded communication tower and escape from the enemy back to friendly camp 180 kilometers away. The enemy are experienced GGK commandos. If they catch the recruits, they will be ruthless. <laughs> Di sini lah kita nak uji dia. Dia faham ataupun tidak apa yang Jyotis bagi kepada dia. Daripada mula hingga lah pernah. Beri perlindungan. They will trek 10 kilometers through the jungle to reach their target. At 5 a.m., they must enter the area undetected, rig the tower with C4 explosives, destroy it, and escape through the jungle unnoticed. 
but the enemy are waiting in position. Recruit 14 has been chosen to lead the ambush. This is his moment to shine, as the fate of his entire team rests in his hands. Jadi di sini, Teluk Komando main peranan penting sebab kita menentukan menggunakan live. Saya rasa berbangga dipilih dan saya orang tersan percaya kepada saya nak jadi ketua untuk sebuah ini. Bapa saya betul-betul bangga dengan saya sebab dia seorang tentera. Sekarang ini yang pressure. Kuku kambing. Final preparations before the assault. Every man needs to know his role and the action to take when they hit the enemy. Once they set the explosives, they'll use a code word, goat snails. The signal for recruits to clear the target area and make a beeline to safety. But to get there, they have a long way to go. AM, and the recruits have been trekking six hours to their target. Asal bimbang, saya punya pergerakan ini kita musuh. Bila kita musuh, mana kan saya gagal. Kalau saya tak dapat bila hijau ni, mana hidup saya gagal. Jadi saya hanya jadi asal biasa, tak jadi seorang daripada pasukan elit, pasukan elit agak tak terlalu sihir. Recruit 14 also has to make sure his troops stay awake. They've been on the move for hours and they're running on empty. Masuk ke naga. Itu serangan malam ni semua bergantung pada naga yang masih ada. Baki-baki tenaga, tapi dalam keadaan terdesak ni, komando dia akan mengeluarkan tenaga luar jangkaan. Ah, Sebuan. Tujuh orang. Under pressure, a commando needs to be able to dig deep to stay on full alert. Jangan mencah. At 4.45 a.m., the assault team reaches their target. They prepare the attack and the explosives. Di sini, dia akan perhatikan gerak bergeri musuh. Okey, apa musuh akan buat. Itu dia, dia perhati betul-betul adalah. Ambil kerukan. Five a.m., strike time. They begin to approach their target. Cuma di situ kita ada dengar sedikit bunyi lah, bunyi ranting dipatahkan, okay? Ranting dipatahkan, hanya sedikit saja bising. A smoke grenade heightens the confusion. Flares are a signal for help by the enemy. The recruits make their exit. Secara keseluruhannya. Uh, I bagi uh, 80 ke 85% sukses. But it's not over yet. In groups of 10, they race back into the jungle to escape from the enemy. The enemy are real GGK commandos. They will hunt down as many of the recruits as they can. Bagaimana yang siri-siri sebelum ni kan? Memberitahu gambaran musuh memang dahsyat. Kalau ditangkap musuh memang dahsyat. Moments later, a group of recruits have been caught. They are about to be interrogated to find out who their officer is. It's 45 minutes of excruciating pain. A brutal reminder of what they could face in the real world. 
sebagai mana yang ada dalam sumpah prajurit komando dan juga sumpah kereta tentera darat kan. Ini parasi negara dengan sekat-ketatnya. Their heads are shaved as a mark of capture. They are then released to continue their escape. But as soon as they enter the jungle, they will be chased again. It may be the toughest test yet, but it will also be their most important lesson. In July 2000, Islamic militant group Al-Mauna entered two Malaysian army bases and stole weapons and ammunition. Four hostages were taken along the way. GGK commandos were deployed as part of a reconnaissance and rescue mission. During a sudden crossfire, a commando was caught by the terrorists. He was interrogated and tortured, but he refused to reveal information that might have put the rescue effort in jeopardy. His bravery saved the lives of the hostages, but cost him his own. Recruits have been on a three-month journey through hell. Of the 180 that started, 103 have reached the end of the commando selection course, including recruits 14, 143, and 51. For those left standing, it is the proudest moment of their lives. Perasaan saya sekarang ni, saya mampu mengalihkan mata terlalu gembira, terlalu sedih dan terlalu seronok dan paling terharu sekali di hadapan mak ayah saya, saya mampu menyarung beri seorang komando. Now begins their real journey as GGK commandos. They have become part of an elite team that will continue to make a mark in their country's history. Thank you.